this video I'm going to show you how to use the dryer, how to get started with the dryer. So for this I am going to use a uh, Nara paper, 8 inches circle and I have this same dryer that I've been using till now in the other videos. So the first thing that you need to know is how powerful your dryer is. Sometimes the dryer is very powerful and it is hard to control. The paper starts to flap. Um, it is possible to work with those kind of dryers but I would recommend if possible get a dryer which is smaller in size, easier to control and you will face you know initially when you're already struggling with everything it makes sense to get a dryer that works so that you don't find it difficult to get started all right so with this dryer all i need to do is pour some alcohol and inks on my surface and let's say that this is the area where my inks are i will hold the dryer perpendicular to the paper and let's say if my ink and the alcohol solution is somewhere here I will hold the dryer a little away like three fingers away and one or two fingers high so that I can give very gentle air pressure from all the sides like this so when you're holding the dryer try not to point it towards your ink initially just try to control that ink pool by gently uh, providing very little pressure from the side of the dryer so that's why you need to hold the dryer perpendicular very close to the paper so that only a little bit of wind escapes from here and approximately two to three fingers away from the area where you are drying so you will be able to see once I show you this is the very first step to get started with inks so and as usual, I am putting alcohol first. This is very important if you are working on UPO paper, you must put alcohol first and not put the inks first. While on Nara paper or synthetic papers, you can even put the inks first, that's okay. So this time I am using Nara inks, dotting blue and, and ballerina pink. So now look at the uh, way I try and control this. So very gently, I'm not trying to do much, just slowly moving the inks wherever I want them. Just like this. You can rotate the paper so that um, it's in your control and just dry from the sides, just like this. Try not to mix the colors completely so that you can get some nice gradients and shades happening. If you mix the colors completely then uh, all those shading and uh, those kind of things will go away. So just remember where to hold the dryer. If your dryer is very powerful try and hold it even further away like this and maybe angled away in this way so this dryer is not so powerful so i'm not able to work like that and then once it is almost dry you can dry from any side even from the top angle or anywhere just experiment with your dryer get a hang of it from where to hold, how far does it work best and all that because each each dryer is different and it would, you know, I cannot tell you to get this one exactly the same one and even if you do, you will still have to figure out your own comfort level where it works best. So this is something that I did, the first layer. Now we can keep working more on this. Now let's say I want to add some more color here so I will put um, just the alcohol first and then some uh, color. So 
this time blue. Remember each time you reactivate the inks it will create a separate section like this. So when thinking in terms of composition you have to figure out where you should uh, pour your inks. I have a habit of slightly rubbing on the lines of the inks that are formed so that I can get rid of any harsh lines that stain the paper. So you can use any thin brush or a tool like this a soft silicone tip tool to merge I mean smudge the inks underneath and then exactly the same way you can start drying. Now you can even practice moving the inks like this in one direction. So just keep pushing from one side and keep taking the ink further forward. So like in a U shape you can keep pushing the ink forward on the paper. So the first thing is basically to understand how your dryer functions, not worry so much about what you are creating, just understand how to hold it, where to hold it, how powerful it is and get a hang of it. So do you see that these kind of lines that we call ripples form automatically when you start drying only from one side and keep moving forward so that's why these lines happen. Now we can keep reactivating. Let me show you what happens when we don't use any extra ink um, like in the second part I reactivated and then I also added some ink this time I'm not going to add any extra ink. But I'm just gonna continue the ones that are left on the paper at the edge over here so that I get some nice faded effect. So this time just alcohol and I just like to scrub on the lines that form so that I can get rid of those. And then again you can start drying. You can dry in any direction like I just changed the direction, I changed, I moved towards this side. All I am trying to do is to control the ink pool and moving it wherever I want it to go. So that's what you have to practice with your dryer. nice so let me reactivate this side again with just the alcohol no extra ink this is what you need to practice initially when you start with the dryer don't think so much just um, you know put some inks and alcohol on the paper and just move them around with the dryer you will I promise you, you will get some really nice and beautiful effects that you had not even thought about. Just experiment, go with your instinct, don't think at all while doing this. Just try and control the flow of the ink, that's it. Layer over your previously done work. So as you saw I added more alcohol at the top here and I am not taking the ink in that direction I am just bringing it down towards this part so that the top part becomes light. So try and experiment with such techniques. And I prefer to keep rotating the paper so that um, I can control where I am drying from better. So 
so I'm trying and push I'm trying to push the ink towards that white area so just experiment I mean I don't have any plan for what I'm going to do with this it's just that just practice to control the inks that's it that's that's the objective here I can add some more alcohol here see uh, every time you add alcohol you will be reactivating whatever you have done so you can keep working on your piece if you don't like any part you can always keep reworking like this any portion and start uh, drying it again just like this and initially don't think of any specific shape just try and make whatever happens with the inks I think I will do a little bit over here mm, in any shape any direction just reactivate so I'm just bringing it till here outside so that I can get some nice um, white um, you know gradient like this wispy effect wherever you add more alcohol towards the edges you will be creating light effect uh, by pushing the ink from outside towards the middle so don't push the ink from this to that side push the ink from outside towards the middle and you will get this nice light section at the top so as you can see I am not pushing the ink from this side towards the top I am just pushing from the top part or the sides and I'm trying to bring them down like this now I'm just going around in circles around that last bit of ink left so you know just do all these things don't think about anything I, I mean I mean I've been repeating it so many times but uh, that's what it is about to enjoy the inks and enjoying the flow so you just need, let, uh, need to let yourself go and enjoy the freedom that the inks provide so that's how it looks so far I I really kind of like what is happening maybe um, um, maybe something over here a little bit of pink so let's say if I want to add pink this time I'm showing you how I can add directly with the uh, bottle it's not a very good idea to do that because some of the inks that are you know more pigmented might stain your paper so you don't want that to happen um, when working on synthetic paper or yupo paper so it's always better to put the alcohol first if possible so as you can see I'm using my tool to give some shapes here and there adding some more alcohol at the top and don't worry about going over any part that you've already done it's absolutely okay because that layering creates such nice effects that layering and textures happen that you had not planned for so just just don't worry about layering keep making more and more
can even push the ink out of the paper like this like how I'm doing right now just wipe it real quick so that's how it looks it looks really pretty to me um in terms of composition you can think of adding more elements if you want to maybe i will just do once again over here to fill this uh, white section so just adding some alcohol and this time I think blue just smudging it so that I can get rid of the lines underneath because sometimes even while drying they don't go away so I like to do it with my hands and make sure that they are gone Add some more alcohol if you need to. You can even try and you know continue further by adding more alcohol in the direction where you're going and then just pushing the ink into that alcohol just like we did in the previous technique where we used the lens blower. Similarly with the dryer also you can do something like that if you want to keep moving forward and not stop and just add some more alcohol in the direction where you want to go and then keep moving. And now I'll attempt to push the excess ink outside so that I don't have to worry about it rising uh, from the edges. Looks so cool. One last thing that I really like to do is to spray on top of it with isopropyl alcohol. So this is my bottle of isopropyl alcohol in a spray bottle, travel spray bottle. So from a distance I will just give a little spurt on it. This is how it looks. I got some nice dots happening. So that is how you can start playing with your inks and then create wispy sections by adding more alcohol towards the edges and just bringing it down instead of pushing it towards the light part. Instead of that push from the light part towards the darker part. And then just keep going like that and you'll get the nice um, wispy effect towards the edges like this light fading happening here so that's it for this one and let's see you in the next video bye bye